I just trust that uh, that song uh, helps us to understand that we need to be still and know the presence of, of the Lord in our lives. I think that's important for us to continue to remember. Okay. Uh, today's reading is something that we have done earlier. Okay. Uh, we have talked about this whole area of the parable of the talents. Uh, we have discussed it, I think, on Tuesday. Okay, uh, so I won't uh, do it again, unless any of you got any questions or uh, reflection on it. Today, I will pass, uh, carry on to another part of uh, stewardship <coughs> that's very important. Okay, your Bible, you turn your Bible to 1 Timothy. 1 Timothy chapter 6. 1 Timothy chapter 6, verses 6 to 10. 1 Timothy chapter 6, verses 6 to 10. 1 Timothy chapter 6, verses 6 to 10. Okay. Can I invite uh, Chandra? Can you read for us? 1 Timothy chapter 6, verses 6 to 10. Chandra, you have your Bible with you? I unmute you, Ray Chandra. You can read. First oh, Timothy, sorry, sorry. 1 Timothy chapter 6, verses 6 to 10. Please read. Um, but God's and contentment is great gain. For we brought nothing into this world, and it is certain we can carry nothing out. And having food and clothing with these, we shall be content. But those who are to be rich fall, in, tem fall into temptation and a snare and into many foolish and harmful lusts, which, which drown their action and and prediction. For the love of money is the root of all kind of evil, for, for which some have strayed from the faith in this greediness and pierced themselves through with many sorrows. Amen. Thank you. Okay, I yeah, think... Pastor. Thank you. Uh, okay. Even as we talk about this whole area of contentment, uh, I think it's important for us to keep that in mind. Uh, this whole area of contentment. Uh, I need to. Okay. Now, contentment is very closely linked with stewardship. 
Okay, uh, we know that we are laborers, God is the owner, and we are just caretakers in the manner of speaking for all that God has blessed us with. And, we, and even if you say that God has blessed us with a lot of things, are we then contented? That is a very important question. Are we then contented? I think contentment, somebody uh, uh, defined it as a state of being mentally or emotionally satisfied with things as they are, with what we have, with who we are, with where we are. I think that's contentment. Mentally, emotionally satisfied. Uh, sometimes we may say in our mouth we are satisfied, but our heart may be said differently. Our mind may think differently. So true contentment is both not only of our heart, but also of our mind. How we feel and how we think. Uh, that, in a way, uh, defines contentment as we have it now. Actually, the Bible has a lot to say about contentment. Okay, Even Jesus is teaching Matthew 6. Matthew 6 talks about, Therefore I tell you, do not worry about your life, what you will eat, drink, about your body, what you will wear. Is not life more than important than food, and the body more than clothes? I mean, that is just a statement, a teaching of Jesus, to tell us that we need to be satisfied, we need to be contented with what we have. If you have enough to eat, enough to drink, we have a roof over our head, and a, a, a place to stay, and clothing to wear, we should be satisfied, we should be contented. I think that's important. Because it goes on to say in the later part of uh, Matthew 6, the last few verses, for the pagans, those who do not know God, run after all these things, and your heavenly Father knows that you need them. But seek first His kingdom and His righteousness, and all these things will be given to you as well. So he said, so Jesus says very clearly, the people of the world who don't know me will run after what they eat, what they wear, where they stay, their titles, wealth. <clears throat> the people of the world will run after all this. But you should know that your heavenly Father, who clothes the birds of the air, who clothes the lilies of the field, will take care of you, will take care of you. I think that's important <clears throat> for us to understand and for us to take note of this whole area of contentment. And the person who, <clears throat> you may say, uh, was Paul ever contented? Paul who wrote this letter to Timothy, his, uh, the way he's uh, kaijai. Okay. If anybody... Uh, should feel in a way upset, lah, upset. Actually, Paul, who did so much for the gospel, and yet in 1 Timothy 6, he can write these words. Paul, who went, who preached the gospel at great cost to himself, shipwrecked, flocked, stoned, chased out of town. Okay? And as uh, 1 Corinthians 12 says, torn in the flesh. I mean, we don't know what that is, physical torment, uh, fishly to tormented. And yet, this is the same Paul who can say in Philippians 4, I know what it is to be in need, and I know what it is to have plenty. I've learned the secret of being content in any and every situation, whether well-fed or hungry, whether living in plenty or in one. I can do all things through him who gives me strength, who strengthens me. Paul, who has suffered so much for the sake of the gospel, can say this, I got a lot, I'm thankful. I got little, I'm thankful. I think that's something that we need to learn from Paul. <clears throat> he did not have an easy life. He did not, in the way, have that all the uh, uh, trappings of wealth, as you call it, end up in prison, end up being persecuted. And this is the same Paul who wrote to us, 
First Timothy, a whole area of contentment, a whole area that helps us to understand that we need to be satisfied with what we have. Someone says, if you got a roof over your head and food to eat on the table, this is statistically, you're on the top 93% of the whole world. Because there are many people with no roof over their head and no food to eat. If you have a pair of shoes just to wear, and many of us got more than one pair, I must admit I got more than one pair, you are within the top 75% of the world. There are so many in the world, no shoes to wear. I think contentment is both of your heart and of the mind. And even Solomon in his wisdom in Ecclesiastes says, whoever loves money, never have money enough. Whoever loves wealth is never satisfied with what he has, with his income. Ecclesiastes 5.10 All this is meaningless. You want to chase after wealth, you can. But no matter how much wealth you have, you will never be satisfied because there's always somebody with more or you can have more. I think it's important for us to understand this and to come to realization. So I think uh, to today's devotion, the whole area of contentment is very important for you and for me. And not only contentment, okay, you see 1 Timothy 6.6. 6. 1 Timothy says 6, not only contentment, but godliness with contentment is great gain. So not only contentment, but godliness, a godly disposition, a godly lifestyle, a godly life uh, living that we have we need to have so not only are we to be contented with what we have but we need to be godly god fearing serving god walking in god's way and we put two, two of them together and that will be a great gain a lot of times we think of contentment only in terms of possession what we own what we own, what we have. But actually contentment is much more than just what we own, our possession. Contentment with who you are. Are you contented with who you are? Are you contented with how you look? Are you contented with your ability, your gifts, ability to sing, ability to do things? Are you contented? Are you contented with the family that God has blessed you with? None of us got a perfect family. But are you contented with the family that you have? Are you contented with the job that you have? There's always something better. There's always another dream than chase after. But are you contented where you are at this time? Are you contented to be a Malaysian? I ask you. Or would you rather be an American or a British citizen or a New Zealander? <laughs> Are you contented to be a Malaysian? For God has placed you here in this time, in this season. Are you contented to be who you are, where you are, how you are? I think that's important to remind ourselves. And not be contented, but contented with Godliness, being godly in what we say, in how we live our life, in how we express ourselves to others. I think those two are very important for us to understand. So in this world, as you well know, there are many people who use the Christian religion and says, God wants to bless you. If God bless you, you must not only be healthy, must be wealthy. There's a lot of proponents of this kind of teaching and they quote certain part of the scriptures. See, God made Abraham so rich. Why can't the rest of you who obey be so rich? I think it's something that you need to 
learn from scripture, learn how to be contented with what God has blessed us with. As we, did, as we discussed last two days, what talents God has given to you, you are responsible stewards to use that. To whom more is given, more is required. If God bless you with plenty, you have to give an account for much, much more. God knows how much we can manage, how much we can handle, and we need to be contented as it is. So even as I bring this uh, devotion to a close, my question to you, brothers and sisters, are you contented at this moment? Who you are, where you are, how you are. Are you contented not only with life itself, but are you having godliness with contentment? Or are you still chasing your elusive dream of financial wealth, security? Are you still chasing those? So it's something for us to think through, to consider. You should talk about stewardship, being responsible stewards. I think a good steward will be contented. A godly steward will have godliness with contentment. And Paul says, that is great gain. I think that's important for all of us to understand. So I'm going to close by playing. I found this, uh, uh, this scripture references to contentment. I'm going to play it. It's a YouTube. Just sit back and let the words minister to you. Let the words, whole area of contentment, minister to you. May it speak to you as it spoke to me. Contentment. A joyful heart is good medicine, but a broken spirit dries up the bones. Proverbs 17, 22. All the days of the afflicted are bad, but a cheerful heart has a continual feast. Proverbs 15:15. 15, 15. Godliness actually is a means of great gain when accompanied by contentment. 1 Timothy 6:6. 6, 6. If they hear and serve him, they will end their days in prosperity and their years in pleasures. Job 36:11. Rest in the Lord and wait patiently for him. Do not fret because of him who prospers in his way, because of the man who carries out wicked schemes. Cease from anger and forsake wrath. Do not fret. It leads only to evil doing. Psalm 37, 7 and 8. O oh, satisfy us in the morning with your loving kindness, that we may sing for joy and be glad all our days. Psalm 90, 14. For he has satisfied the thirsty soul, and the hungry soul he has filled with what is good. Psalm 107, 9 The fear of the Lord leads to life, so that one may sleep satisfied, untouched by evil. Proverbs 19, 23 Do not fret because of evildoers, or be envious of the wicked. Proverbs 24, 19 Why do you spend money for what is not bread, and your wages for what does not satisfy? Listen carefully to me, and eat what is good, and delight yourself in abundance. Isaiah 55, 2 Not that I speak from want, for I have learned to be content in whatever circumstances I am. I know how to get along with humble means, and I also know how to live in prosperity. In any and every circumstance, I have learned the secret of being filled and going hungry both of having abundance and suffering need. Philippians 4, 11 through 12. If we have food and covering, with these we shall be content. 1 Timothy 6, 8. Make sure that your character is free from the love of money, being content with what you have. For he himself has said, I will never desert you, nor will I ever forsake you. Hebrews 13, 5. As for me, I shall behold your face in righteousness. I will be satisfied with your likeness when I awake. Psalm 17, 15 The afflicted will eat and be satisfied. Those who seek him will praise the Lord. 
Let your heart live forever. Psalm 22:26. With a long life I will satisfy him and let him see my salvation. Psalm 91:16. Who satisfies your years with good things so that your youth is renewed like the eagle? Psalm 103:5. The soul of the sluggard craves and gets nothing, but the soul of the diligent is made fat. Proverbs 13, 4 He will not accept any ransom, nor will he be satisfied though you give many gifts. Proverbs 6, 35 Some soldiers were questioning him, saying, And what about us? What shall we do? And he said to them, do not take money from anyone by force, or accuse anyone falsely, and be content with your wages. Luke 3.14 Therefore I am well content with weaknesses, with insults, with distresses, with persecutions, with difficulties, for Christ's sake. For when I am weak, then I am strong. 2 Corinthians 12.10 So I hope that uh, speaks to you, okay, as you spoke to me. Let us pray. <clears throat> well, I just thank you, Lord, for this whole area, Lord, of helping each one of us to understand the need to love for us to be contented with who we are, where we are, how we are. For you are God who loves us and you continue to look out <clears throat> and have your way in our lives. So I just pray, Lord, that each one of us, my brother, my sister, including myself, will know what it means to have godliness with contentment. And truly, O Lord, that we long to be good stewards of your blessing upon our life and continue to do all that you want us to do now and forevermore. Amen. Amen. Okay, uh, that's my short.